Okay, so let me uh, interrupt the, the conversation right now because we are at nine already. So we are very honored and happy to our today's speaker from uh, Dr. Wei Yu from uh, the Department of Geological and Petroleum Engineering. And uh, this talk was recommended by uh, Dr. Boren at the Bureau. So uh, I would love to have Dr. Bo to introduce uh, Dr. Wei Yu. Po? Sorry. Good morning, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much for attending today's seminar. My name is Bo Zing. I'm now a research associate working for the STAR program. Today, it's my great pleasure to introduce our speaker, Wei Yu. We have been a good friends for almost eight years. Dr. Wei Yu is now an associate research associate in the Hilda Brand Department of Petroleum and Geosystem Engineering at UT Austin. He is also the Chief Technology Officer for SimTech LLC. He is an Associate Editor for SP Journal and Journal of Petroleum Science and Engineering. His research interests include embedded discrete fracture model <laughs> that is EDFM technology for modeling complex fractures, zero gas and tight oil radar simulation, EDFM AR for automatic history matching and complex fracture characterization. Dr. Wei Yu authored and co-authored more than 150 technical papers and holds five patents and three books. Those three books are zero gas and tight oil rare simulation, embedded discrete fracture modeling and application in rare simulation, and assisting the history matching for unconventional reservoirs. He holds a PhD degree in petroleum engineering from UT Austin. That's a pretty long bio. Huh? So uh, let's welcome Dr. Wei Yu. Uh, to give with the seminar, Dr. V, okay. please. Uh, thanks Thank a lot you, for Paul. your. Can you see my screen, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, thanks for introducing me. Uh, it's my great pleasure uh, to be invited and to be here, uh, give this talk. Uh, I represent our big team from uh, RSJP, uh, from uh, Professor Kami Safanuri, and also uh, SimTech to give this uh, uh, presentation. And uh, hopefully we can see each other face to face. Today I will uh, talk about our key technologies like EDFM and uh, EDFM AI for modeling and calibration of complex hydraulic and natural fractures. This is overview of today's presentation. Uh, first, uh, I will discuss about fracture complexity in reality. And then I will move on the <clears throat> first key technology uh, embedded discrete fracture model and show some uh, field applications. And after that, I will move on our second key technology, EDFM AI, to calibrate hydraulic and natural fractures. Uh, finally, is a summary. As we know, with unconventional development, we have a lot of observations from uh, other crop, uh, coral analysis, micro stud make, and uh, some fiber, and also some modeling results, especially like uh, uh, recently geothermal. So all these observations show that we are not dealing with a simple fracture geometry. However, there is a big gap. We, we don't have any commercial simulator to handle this complexity. So the key goal for us we need to develop, we try our best to develop uh, the best of uh, modeling technology to handle this 3D fracture complexity and also try to calibrate these complex fractures. So the first technology is about EDFM. In order to model 3D fracture per, uh, well performance, three popular methods are often used by commercial simulator. The first one is DPDK model, is dual porosity, dual permeability. 
and second one is LGR with a structure grid, and the third one is the unstructured grid. However, all these methods, they cannot model 3D fracture with some deep angle. So that's the key reason we develop our <coughs> EDFM technology. And you can see here, we can use a simple, a simple grid to model any 3D fracture geometry. We do not need LGR. We do not need on structure grid. What EDFM does here, I want to use a, sim a simple example to show the key concept. In this example, you can see we have three simple matrix block. We try to model two 3D fractures. And in the computational domain, we will have two different uh, grid. One is a matrix grid, and the second is a fracture grid. And you can see uh, fracture one will be divided by three segments by the boundary of the matrix. And then you have a three fracture block. At the first two, you have a fraction, uh, only one block. <clears throat> so the second step, we will automatically check their non-neighbor connection. For example, fracture two, talk to third matrix. However, they are not neighbors. So that's the reason we use non-neighbor to, to make their connection. At the last step, we will, based on this equation, to calculate heat and flow transmissibility. So that's a key concept of EDFM does. And this equation show how to calculate transmissibility for two grid block. And we can see the transmissibility calculation only depends on three parameters. The first is the relative di uh, distance between two grid. A second is the common area. A third is permeability. So it's not related to a uh, fluid property. So that the EDFM can work for both black oil simulation and uh, compositional simulation. And for the EDFM method, we propose the three different non-neighbor connection types. The first one is matrix to fracture intersection. And the second one is a fracture connection in the same fracture plane. And the third way, the fracture intersection between two different fractures in the single grid. And all the calculation equation uh, we uh, proposed here. Here, I want to show a little bit about history of the EDFM technology. The initial embedded idea was proposed in 1997 by UT Austin. And then some shell some shell people apply this idea to model fault using different domain and spatial connections. And in 2008, Chevron people extend this idea to model 2D natural fracture and use a simple analytical solution to calculate transmissibility. And 10 years ago, from our group by Professor Safinori, we first proposed 3D EDFM because we really believe we cannot only model 2D fracture, we should model 3D and also not only natural fracture, but also <coughs> hydraulic fractures. And we systematically <coughs> proposed the three different types of non-neighbor connections and also fracture to well connection. And we implemented this technology and in all our UT in-house radar simulators, like UTCOM, UTCAM, and also extend to more realistic uh, geo model with corner point and on structure grid. And in 2015, we also extend uh, the EDFM technology to work for any commercial radar simulators. And in 2017, the same tech uh, jointly works with the UT Austin together to do a commercialization of this uh, EDFM technology, try to make it more efficient and more user-friendly and better visualization. And we work closely with the industry, try to handle the challenge industry scale field studies. 
this is our EDFM uh, software. We try to couple third-party fracture simulator and uh, third-party reservoir simulator. If you work on natural fracture characterization using something like a petrol frac flow and some hydraulic fracture modeling like kinetics gopher, all these complex fractures can transfer to any reservoir simulator like CMG, Eclipse, Key Navigator, and others using our EDFM software. And then all these reservoir simulator, they can easily and efficiently to model well performance with all these complex fractures. If without our EDFM software, they cannot do that. They must do simplification using simple fracture geometry. And also we develop our in-house uh, fracture simulator called ZFRAC. And also can be smoothly go to our in-house reservoir simulator, URC. And for this technology, we have about 10 years of development experience and with our US patent. We did a lot of benchmark for this technology. Uh, this I uh, show one case in Nye Brara Tide Gas work with the Y operator. Uh, they provide data for us. You can see here we have a multiple well, uh, you, including about more than 300 hydraulic fractures, but this simple planar fracture. So the LGR method still works. And after comparison, we found the EDFM can get a similar results with LGR method. However, we will see the CPU time. And the EDFM can be 20 times faster than the LGR method. If you use the LGR run a single case, you need to run about 10 hours, it's about one day. But use the EDFM is only about 30 minutes because EDFM can use much less grid block to model these complex, uh, to model these uh, uh, fra fractures. Another beautiful and interesting th thing to see, you see the pressure distribution. As this plot, it looks like a beautiful and lovely dog. Hopefully you guys like, the, like it. So other than computational efficiency advantage of EDFM, we also can couple with the fracture simulator, uh, the geometry. If you are familiar with the kinetics. Here I show two examples. One is a single well, and the third, second one is a multiple well with non-planar hydraulic fractures. So if without EDFM, you should go to unstructured grid. You need a lot of smaller grid nearby these uh, complex fractures. It will run much slow. So with EDFM, we can use a simple Cartesian grid. You can see the grid is no unstructured grid. And then we develop uh, a beautiful visualization tool to, sh to show the drainage volume. And you can see the fracture complexity on the drainage volume. <clears throat> Here, we also show the dynamic drainage volume to understand the well interference. Uh, next uh, example, EDFM coupled with Gopher. Uh, I think a Gopher software is also widely used by many operators. And this is the first this single stage with Gopher, and we can directly transfer geometry to any reservoir simulator. However, we found a very interesting thing using the original Gopher fracture geometry is a little bit hard to get a, a better match, especially at a later time, it will be it will overestimate well performance. So we, re we really think the go for uh, geometry, a uh, little bit overestimate uh, the real geometry. So th then how, how to do better match? So based on this limitation, we proposed a, a new idea. We can do cut off. We can do cut off. So we can do uh, cut off the fracture length and the fracture height, try to do a uh, better match. And you can see after cut off, we can get a pretty better match. Uh, this is the pressure distribution. Actually, we can do automatically cut to do uh, EDFM AI to match the results. Here, I want, to sh I want to show, actually our EDFM can model almost any complex fractures. 
Here I show three example. The first one is called non-planar hydraulic fracture with a different height and different aperture. A second one, we synthetically generated three textile shape fracture geometry. And you can see the fracture boundary is pretty complex. A third one is a fully 3D fracture geometry. With our EDFM, you can easily to do well performance of all this complexity. Hopefully, our textile shape can produce more oil and gas. So this part is a talk, uh, talk about some EDFM uh, idea and concept. So the next, uh, I will show some applications. First, in conventional reservoir, and also I will show some applications in unconventional reservoirs. If you work on naturally fractured reservoir in conventional reservoir, if you do reservoir simulation, the first idea, the method you will think is about the DPDK method. Here, I show the comparison between our EDFM and the DPDK. I, I build a simple model. We have one injector, one producer. As you can see, there is no fracture intersection between these fractures. As we know, the DPDK method will assume all the fracture connected to each other. So that will, the fracture connectivity will be overestimated. As you can see, use the DPDK method, the water breaks through will happen much earlier than the EDFM. And the EDFM will treat the fracture individually and accurately. So you cannot see the water breaks through because there is no fracture intersection. So from this comparison, we can easily understand our EDFM perform much accurate than the DPDK method. And also we test some field case, uh, comparison. In this case, we have about a single well, it's around 15,000 3D complex natural fractures. And we use the EDFM to do a better history matching. And then we use the same fracture property to do upscaling into a DPDK method. And also you can observe DPDK will overestimate well performance. So based on this advantage of our EDFM, we try to think how to improve our naturally fra natural fracture modeling workflow. Traditionally, we have a, a great smart ge geology people using a lot of core data, image log, and other information to propose a conceptual model. I love this part. I try to learn more about this part. I think some DFI simulator to couple geology information to generate beautiful 3D natural fracture. And for the reservoir engineer people, we have no choice. We, we, we must do upscaling to do reservoir model, to do production history matching forecasting. And today, I want to say you have a better choice now. You can use EDFM method to honor the more realistic 3D DFN from geology people. And then you can input our reservoir engineer software to do uh, history matching and also forecasting, and even you can do full field uh, simulations. And for natural fracture, we for natural fracture reservoir, we develop another key module called natural fracture connectivity analysis, because there is no commercial sim uh, DFN simulator to do this. And using our this tool, we can this is show one big field case application is about three million natural fractures and we can do quick analysis and you can see different color that show different group of natural fracture connectivity and in the biggest group was shown in light blue color uh, including more than 26,000 natural fracture and uh, using this connectivity analysis it will be useful for the drilling at some new well in the highly connected fracture area to get more production and, and uh, further, furthermore, we develop uh, another feature called shortest path modeling for water intrusion. Especially for naturally fractured right now, if we have a water intrusion issue, the traditional DPDK method is hard to do that. Then we 
have an idea to identify the shortest path from any location of the well to the water zone. And we believe the water intrusion will allow some shortest path to the well. And based on this shortest path, we can generate a single one path, or we give a circle to generate multiple shortest paths. And then we can easily change the spatial fracture, such as conductivity, to match the water intrusion. So I show here, I show one case study in a carbonate gas reservoir. As you can see, we for this well, we look for three shortest paths. We change their conductivity, and it will easier match the water intruder. And this plot shows the dynamic water intruding process. After this uh, single well match, we can also apply it to other wells. Actually, in this full field, uh, we have many wells. And including 22,000 natural fractures and 33 big faults. And this pressure distribution in the fracture and the fault. As here show the water separation distribution after history matching. So that helps a lot for the future uh, new well drilling and also how to control water intruder. And another application in, uh, in Peru, that's a carbonate gas condensate reservoir. A similar idea applied here, and including about uh, more than 11,000 natural fractures. And this, uh, we show the water intrusion process in the uh, complex natural fracture. And you can see uh, for this well, we have about after five years, we have strong water intrusion, and we can have a better match. The next key challenge topic is also our ongoing project, is WAG modeling. Uh, based on statistical, uh, based on geological statistics, we can see 36 around the oil and gas reservoir, they are carbonate reservoir. And the, this map shows the distribution in the world of the carbonate reservoir. And uh, uh, we work with one big operator in Brazil. We try to develop a WAG uh, simulator to model uh, WAG in the Brazil. And, uh, there is a big gap also here. There is no commercial reservoir simulator can do WAG modeling. So that we want to do something new to uh, overcome this limitation. And uh, because we do a better job for the fra naturally fra natural fracture simulation, but how to model WAG? Here, based on the WAG uh, uh, characterization, it well, can have a different shape. And then we can easily embed this WAG into our red one model. Here I show two WAG. And then we, we have another special connection called WAG to WAG connection because the fluid flow in the WAG is not a Darcy law, it's a free flow. Also, we can call laminar flow. And a second connection called fracture to WAG uh, intersection. So the two steps we will uh, work on this uh, WAG modeling. First, we will develop our URC simulator to accurately model laminar flow in the WAGs. As a second step, we will extend our WAG modeling to the existing commercial reservoir simulator, such as Eclipse, CMG, using some more proper simpli simplifications. That's the whole workflow to the WAG modeling. So first, we need to keep geology information based on WAG characterization, and we can embed in WAG in our geology model. And then after EDFM, we can divide it three different uh, domain. First is matrix domain, second is fracture domain, third is WAG domain. And then we can solve uh, Sturker's Brinkman equation and do WAG simulation. So if you show more interesting about the WAG modeling, and then recently we will have a workshop to discuss more detail about our WAG and also let me know. So that is the first big part for application in naturally conventional reservoirs. So next, I show all application in unconventional reservoirs. The first application is about uh, natural fracture connectivity. Uh, this show one horizontal well. The geology people provide a beautiful 3D natural fracture. And also after connectivity analysis, we found only about 50% connected at a 50% not connected. 
So then we develop another feature. We can scale up the fracture size. For, for example, if we increase the natural fracture size by, by 1.5 times, and we can see 80% of fracture will be connected. If we increase more, like 1.8, it's about 90% of fracture will be connected. So we want to know what's the well performance difference if you have a different connectivity. Because many operators said that we have a similar well drilling, similar well completion, but well performance is different. So I think maybe the natural fracture connectivity is different. That's maybe one of the reasons show big difference uh, well performance. This slide shows the comparison of well uh, performance. It's, it's four different scenario. It's first the new natural fracture. This is the original natural fracture. This is a 1.5 and 1.8 increase. As you can see, the natural fracture connectivity increases uh, the well production significantly. So that tells us it's very important to characterize the natural fracture size and the natural fracture connectivity. And also we have a better visualization uh, using drainage volume. It can give you clear understanding of the complex fracture complexity that, uh, on the drainage volume. That will be useful for the future well spacing optimization. So next application is to test the EDFM capability. This work with uh, we work with the well operator. They try to use EDFM to model so big a number of horizontal well. In this case, we have mod, we have 400 horizontal well because I don't see any paper using commercial reservoir simulator can handle more than 100 well. So we really, we really want to test our EDFM capability. And in this 10 by 10 mile, this is a 400 horizontal well and including more than 40,000 40, hydraulic fracture and including 1 million natural fracture. And after our EDFM uh, uh, running and the final simulation, we have more than 42 million grid block using our cluster with the 32 CPU running 10 days for the 30 year production. So that can show our strong capability. Our EDFM can handle mini level hydro uh, hydraulic and natural fractures. So next key hot topic is well interference. Uh, here, we work with the well operator in Eagle Fault. As you can see, there are some parent well. And in the middle, we have five child well. So how to, because the well spacing is small from like 250, 240 and 540 feet, there's strong well interference. So in order to understand the fresh heat for each child well, the operator using image log to identify the fresh heat. And you can see the purple line. So using image log, we can uh, understand the fracture heat location, dire direction, and length. So after image log analysis, we identified 28 long fracture heat. And if you can imagine, if you, uh, if you, if you use the IOGR method to model this uh, big number of fracture, it's almost impossible. And you can see, this big model includes uh, more than 2,000 uh, hydraulic fractures. So with EDFM, you can do much easier. And after history matching, we can get a better understanding of the lung fracture length and the conductivity. As you can see, the longest uh, uh, fracture heat is, um, is larger than 3,000 feet in Eagle Fault, and conductivity is 0.5 meter feet. So understanding the fracture heat is very, very important for the Next key topic, EUR in unconventional radar. And some, this is also many operators using gas, half and half. But uh, I saw many, many papers just to focus on single well. They didn't work on multiple well. So we work with operator together to design this pilot. This pilot including, uh, this pilot in Eagle Ford including 13 well. And we have two pad, one pad, pad one, we have one injector, and the three uh, well injectors, these neighbor three neighbor well uh, shut, off, shut off. And also uh, second panel with well injector four well shut in. And this is the uh, field data that shows three cycles. And you can see when you inject in well two, the, the other three neighbor well, 
they shut in, you will see the pressure response also increase. So that's a very strong evidence to tell us that there is strong well interference due to fracture heat. So we really need to design a better pattern for gas half and half, considering this heat. And using our model, we can get a better match. If without heat, it's difficult to match. Uh, this is me. Uh, I'm happy uh, to go to the field, uh, work with the field people. I'm so excited. Uh, this is my first time uh, to visit the field. I, I love this big guy. This is called gas compressor in half and half in the Eagle Ford. Then we can call, we learn a lot from a pilot in Eagle Ford gas half and half. And we modify this idea in the Permier Basin. As here in the Permian Basin, this is another pilot. We have in, we have two well, and in Wobcam B and Wobcam C. This is a sector model, and the main of fracture is a fracture heat. So we know there is strong heat between two well. So when you do half and half, you cannot do one well injection, and we try to do two well injection simultaneously. And here show the field results. We have two cycle. And this is the oil rate and the gas rate. The result looks good. And also with our uh, EDFM, we can get a better match the pressure response. So next uh, part, I want to talk about geomechanics because the geomechanics is very important for unconventional optimization, especially for depletion effect. However, there is no commercial reservoir simulator can model geomechanics with 3D complex fracture. So we think we can make some change here. This is the first time using our EDFM to model geomechanics with 3D complex hydraulic fracture and natural fracture. And you can see due to the depletion effect, the, the, the stress will be changed. The arrow represents the direction of the maximum stress because the hydraulic fracture will grow along this direction. And the color bar represents the magnitude of minimum stress because the fracture will open along this direction. So based on the uh, geomechanical simulation, we can understand the stress change and also the angle change. This shows the angle change uh, plot. So that I believe there are a lot of application in like a uh, refracting and a new well completion and uh, drilling. Here, we show application in the child well uh, completion design. So here, we, this is the parent well. We export the geomechanics in our in-house fracture simulator, C-FRAC. And then we can see the child well. The vertical well spacing is 15 meter. And you can see the fracture is easier to go to the bottom layer. So and if you increase the vertical spacing to 30 meter, and then the frag geometry will be uh, more symmetric. So considering geomechanics, we can, have, we can do a better job for the optimization of a new well uh, design. So next I talk about a little thermal. So we also uh, develop a thermal EDFM. Uh, the first application called DTS, because I really found a lot of fiber application in the field. Uh, many operators using fiber to understand the fracture, uh, under fracture, uh, fra uh, fractures. However, I found um, most of commercial DTS software, they only can tell you some uh, like uh, production profile. They cannot give you the fracture geometry. So there are also a gap in fiber analysis. So based on this uh, limitation, we propose the DTS AI. We have several ongoing projects. I show the workflow here. First, we got your DTS data. We can do DTS visualization. And after that, we use our DTS AI to do automatically match. We try to match uh, production data and also temperature data. And last step, we can do DTS AI inversion. We can tell you not only production profile, but also we can tell you more about the fracture geometry, like a fracture length, each cluster and fracture height and fracture conductivity. So if you don't uh, like this physical model, if you just want to do production profile, also we can do real time 
DTS AI app application. So next application about the thermal EDFM is a, a geothermal. I read a lot of paper, I listen to many talks about the geothermal, maybe a better new energy in the future development. But I found there is a very big limitation for the uh, geothermal development. They don't have a better, more realistic uh, physical model. And I don't see any commercial software can do a complex fracture in geothermal. If you cannot do better job for the more realistic uh, physical model, how to do better science decision. So that reason, I think we can do a better job using thermal EDFM to do EGS. Here I build a more realistic 3D model. It's about a one meeting grid block. We have one water injector and two producer. And then we use our ZFRAC to generate a complex fracture pattern. And then we add some more complex natural fracture. And then we model EG as a safe term. And here I show some results. So this is like a, a pressure build up for the Mendel injector. And also we can see the matrix cooldown and the uh, fracture cooldown because our EDFM can give you a different uh, visualization for matrix and the uh, and fracture. So based on this work, I can see our thermal EDFM can make our EGS system more realistic physical model. Hopefully we can make a better science-based decision. So that Next key technology, that, that's the first key technology about the EDFM. I show a lot of uh, uh, different application. Hopefully you get some idea. We can do a lot of different work. And the next key technology called EDFM AI. We try to calibrate hydraulic and natural fracture properties. And this EDFM AI, we work about more than five years. And we first, we have a, a, a fracture geometry we can generate or we can couple your fracture geometry and we can embed them in reservoir simulator. And then we can use the machine learning, uh, something deep machine learning. And then we can do a uh, smart sampling using MCMC. So this process is iterative. So until the proxy model is convergent, then we can stop this iteration. In general, we will run about several hundred uh, simulation to get a, a multiple uh, history match solution. So it saves a lot of time to do manual history match. I show several applications. Uh, first, in a shale gas reservoir, uh, this is more realistic geo model. This is a single well, as you see the multiple layer, as a well trajectory in the bottom layer. And in general, using ge a more realistic geo model, we need to do upscaling because geology people did an excellent job of giving a lot of layer. But for red engineer, we need to do some upscaling. Otherwise, it's wrong, the CPU time is a little bit long. <clears throat> so for this case, we upscale to from uh, five to eight, five to, uh, five to uh, uh, eight to ten layer, uh, but we keep the similar distribution of the key uh, physical property like porosity, and uh, also we honor the geology people provided uh, beautiful DFN uh, distribution. And then using our ZFRAC to do first uh, uh, fraction modeling, uh, because in this case, we have a very large minimum and maximum stress difference. As we do to stress shadow effect, you can see the middle fracture is much smaller than the two uh, outer fracture. This is single stage, including three clusters. Then based on this learning, we can uh, quickly generate uh, uh, this complex fracture pattern in the corner point. And then we can embed this complex hydraulic fracture and natural fracture in the corner point of the red one model. So when you do uh, EDFM AI, we need to determine how many of certain parameter we want to involve. In general, we include like a matrix perm and also fracture closure. Even you have a better uh, lab exper uh, experiments, it's still uncertainty. And next is fracture water separation because we want to model water flow back. And also we need, we can consider fracture height, uh, fracture length for different uh, inner fracture and outer fracture, and also some of conductivity, also natural fracture conductivity. So based on all this uncertainty, we can test the different combinations 
So in this case, we, we run 300 combination at real simulation, and we found uh, 55 solutions. Uh, you can see the UT yellow color is our solution, and the red color is the best match that represent the most likely combination. Uh, here it shows the history match results. Here, the first three plot is like a, a 55 will match. And you can get a pretty good match. And also we can identify the best match. And the history match is not, not the only goal, but the more important thing, we want to do calibration. In this case, we try to calibrate like fracture lengths. Here we show uh, fracture half length in the outer fracture and inner fracture. And, uh, after EDFM AI, we can tell you P10, P50, and P90. And this green color is the initial distribution. So from P50, we can see the outer fracture half length is around 130 meter, and the middle one is 52 meters. So that's more reliable to calibrate your effective fracture half length. And also we can calibrate the fracture height. Fracture height is very difficult to characterize using some uh, uh, diagnostic data. Using EDFM AR, we can also give you like P50 is around nine meter. And the next benefit of EDFM AR, we can do better EUR prediction. Uh, we can give you P10, P50, and P90, and also your best match. So that's more reliable than a single EUR prediction. And also you can compare this EUR prediction with your many people using decline curve. So this our UR prediction is based on more realistic physical model. And we can uh, give you different uh, uh, like uh, visualization in the fracture and in the matrix to understand the drainage area. So next application in the Permier Basin. So in the Permier, the well is located in Wolfcamp A because I, I didn't see many paper consider natural fracture in the Permier Basin. So that's the first case study using natural fracture with EDFM in the Permian. In the Permian Basin, in this well, we put some natural fracture, and also we have a DTS data. It's true cluster efficiency is about 75%. It's not 100%. And the, more, and the very interesting thing is the fracture height is not symmetric. 70% go upper, 30% go down. So we want to understand two questions. The first question was, matrix permeability in the Permian Basin. And secondly, what's fracture height at half length? Because the fracture height is very important to design standard well pattern. So in order to answer these two questions, we use our EDFM AI considering this all uncertainty. First, like matrix and the hydraulic fracture, relative permeability and the natural fracture. We input this all uncertainty in our EDFM AI we can do a quick match. The first is without a natural fracture, second group with a natural fracture. We can get a similar match. So in order to answer uh, first question, if you don't consider natural fracture, the matrix permeability in the, in the warp camp A is about this value, 0 0.0, 0, uh, 0 0.01 mm Darcy. That is too big. If you use this value to optimize cluster spacing, that will be over, uh, you, you, will, you will be have a larger cluster space, will be overestimated. But with natural fracture, you can see the matrix permeability will decrease a lot. It's about 800 nanometers. So based on some core measurements and some defeat data, we really believe this value is more reliable in the Permian Basin. So if you do cluster spacing design, it's better using this value. And in order, uh, to answer second question here, we can see the fracture half length in the Permian Basin is about 345 feet. And the fracture height is about 258 feet. So use EDFM AI, we can answer these two questions very well. And then we give you the better UR prediction for this Permian Basin as well. I uh, excuse me, Dr. Wei, uh, can you wrap up the in like three minutes or so we want to leave some time for questions if you can thank you okay i will uh, quickly uh, finish that so uh, the next key application is about the micro seismic because uh, many people uh, have micro seismic data still there are a lot of argument for micro seismic 
and there's no software can couple this uh, geometry in red one model. So we can couple this very well and use the EDF and AI, we can match your production and we can calibrate your uh, fracture size. And you can see the fracture half length after calibration, you can see this, this uh, blue color and the fracture half length was overestimated by 50% if you don't couple with production data. The last application is about multi-well with the fracture heat. We have several ongoing projects for doing this using EDFM AI. And this kit shows three horizontal well. There are a lot of fracture heat, but they are uncertainty. So we can do uncertainty like a fracture heat number, location, size, conductivity. And then we can give it a better match with three well. And after EDFM AI, we can better understand the the different uh, well interfer interference degree between uh, uh, two wells. And this shows the pressure distribution and the, drain and the drainage volume of two years and 20 years. So we believe our EDFM AI can help our industry to better understand the well interference considering fracture heat. So that's my uh, summary. So the current simple fracture model ignore the natural fracture and hydraulic fracture complexity. Actually, they are very important, has significant effects on well performance. So our EDFM and EDFM AI technology can provide the best solution to model and understand this complexity. And our solution is still improving. We are appreciative to learn more through more collaboration with our academia and industry. If you want to understand more about this technology, you can read our first EDFM book in the world and EDFM AI book. Finally, I want to uh, thank our big team member, these smart people. Without them, I, can make, I cannot make this talk. I will also thank you all the, our JIP member and industry partner. They will make a lot of feedback and challenge topic. I'm happy to work with you. And finally, I want to say EDFM cannot only model complex factors, it can also stimulate our long horn and UT often, and uh, thank you. Now uh, I'm happy to answer some questions. All right, thank you, uh, Dr. Wei Yu. Uh, could you please, um, yeah, I'll share your screen. And uh, I didn't see any questions from the chat, I believe, but if any of you have questions, um, okay, Tong Wei, do you want to unmute yourself and uh, ask? Your question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. It, uh, we, it's wonderful to talk. And uh, I have a uh, question related to the fracture heat. And, uh, you know, this is a very important topic, not only for the, the well spacing and uh, infill, and also, also for the half path uh, secondary recovery for the shell gas or shell oil. So, it's, uh, do you have any kind of the, the evidence on this is what is the cause of this kind of fracture heat? Is it because of the complexity of the geology or is it, is it related to the, some engineering completion technology difference? Yeah, <clears throat> uh, based on several projects, I also have some learning uh, I want to share, maybe not so accurate, but that's my thinking. Uh, the first, uh, uh, reason is because of natural fracture. Underground, there are a lot of long natural fracture. So first, uh, when you do, uh, it might be activity to cause this fracture heat. And uh, second, uh, I, I, learned, I learned from the project is because of geology. Maybe some regions have a special uh, geology like geomechanics and the fracture is easier to go to a better location. That's my thinking about two, uh, two main reasons. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, okay, thank you, Tong Wei. Uh, next question from Farzam. Farzam, uh, do you want to unmute yourself? Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, great talk, Wei. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed the talk. Uh, the question that I have, the part the, on the AI, what are the criteria to select? Uh, input parameters for your AI, because if you select different parameters, you may end up with different results. I'm just wondering how you narrow it down uh, for those input parameters that you use. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a, that's a very uh, 
uh, good question. Uh, we always think about how to select the input parameter for our AI. Uh, the first group is like a, a hydraulic fracture. In general, we don't know the half length, height, conductivity, and the fracture closure. So the that we always consider that, and also like a cluster efficiency, right? And then second group is a natural fracture. If you want to consider that, so that's a natural fracture like density and the size. And the third uh, uncertainty is the matrix, subset matrix perm. So in general, we only select about less than 10 uncertain parameters. Maybe that's good enough. OK, so and if, we, if you uh, want to do uh, select, select more, uh, that will uh, consider like a relative perm because some people work on uh, like a shale oil, tide oil is a three phase. The relative perm is also more important because it's very difficult to measure from the lab. So that's my thinking to pick up the uncertain input for AI. Okay, that sounds good. Thank you. So I didn't see any more questions. Thank you, Farsan, for your question. Um, I didn't see any more in the chat at the moment. Does anyone want to just unmute yourself and ask questions? Can I ask one more question? Yeah, sure, Farzan, go ahead. Okay, wait, some of the parameters, when, uh, for example, the fracture height, it's dependent on permeability. And if you use these two as an input parameters to AI, do you think the results would be a little bit skewed? Uh, so my point is the input parameters that you use in, in the AI, they should be independent. And if some of them, they depend on each other, how they affect the final results. For example, per matrix permeability at fracture height. Yeah, uh, for AI, we assume they are uh, like uh, uh, independent. So if you want to consider them a uh, dependent parameter, so like matrix perm and fair height, we need to have a good correlation. So we can, okay, we can put a matrix perm like this value. If you have a good correlation, like uh, from something like RTA, then we can we don't need to input a fair height. However, we didn't find any very reliable correlation to link these uh, uh, parameters. And then we, we just put them independently. Okay. Okay. So you assume that they're independent and then you just, yeah. okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you, Farzam. I got, hey, wait, I'd like to ask one question. Uh, and it follows on the uh, fracture height. I forget the exact number you, you mentioned, but I think it was like 200 feet fracture height in uh, Permian Basin. Mm -hmm. Are those modeled? Uh, and forgive me if those are the wrong uh, absolute numbers. Are those modeled numbers? And if, but if they're measured, how are you getting that data? And is that a uh, wolf camp or is that bone spring? Where, where does that come from? Uh, that's in wolf camp A. Uh, the, the thickness of wolf camp A in this area is about uh, more than 325 feet. So after AI calibration is about, is about 200 uh, feet uh, effective. Thanks. All right, anyone, anyone, any more questions? Lucy, can I have hey. one more question? Sure, Tong Wei, go ahead. Yeah, it's actually, it's not a uh, not question. I just want to ask V, and uh, you show some uh, fiber technology and uh, can give uh, give some uh, information about fracture, fracture information. Can you? Uh, can you give a little bit more information about that, this technology, and uh, about fiber, this technology? Okay. So the, the, the fiber actually, uh, today I only introduced the DTS. Actually, we also work on DAS. I didn't show that. So the DTS, uh, um, uh, if you have a fiber data, right? And uh, DTS, uh, I don't know, uh, there are some company using DTS software to explain your measurements to give you like a production uh, profile from each cluster and also similar, similar like a production log. So that is uh, 
uh, that's the key uh, value they can provide, also give you some uh, fracture initiate. But they don't have the fake call like a fracture uh, uh, model. So they, can, they cannot tell you uh, how about the length and how about the height using fiber. So that reason we input our model. So we, uh, we couple like well ball reservoir fracture together and we try to match your uh, DTS uh, behavior. And then because we have a better model, then we can tell you each stage at each cluster, what their length, what their height. So that we help the operator not only understand some uh, like a production profile and fracture initiation, but also we can tell you the uh, effective length and height. That's much better than only production match because you can show, you can see, I talk about a production match. We assume each, each stage they are similar, right? Actually, they are not they are not uniform. So the DTS can help you a lot. And also, we actually we work on D, D, low frequency DS data. So uh, and also similar thing, the DS data can tell you okay the fracture height location, and also can tell you how much length can be extended. But I didn't show that today. Thank you, thank you, Yue. All right, there's one comment from uh, Gao Bo saying, great talk, thanks for sharing, Dr. Yi. Thank you. All right, any last questions or last two questions? We have three more minutes. And there are a lot of information in your talk and I'm, I'm sure a lot of people are still digesting and people might go back and see your recording. And so may you might have more questions. So if you need uh, contact information, I mean, you can search uh, Dr. Wei's profile or ask me or Sahar or any of us, uh, we can give you his contact or his group's contact information so uh, you can ask them more questions uh, for the follow-up. All right, um, I didn't see any more questions. Uh, so thank you again, Dr. Wei, uh, for your talk. Thank you very much. And I believe your professor, Kami, has another talk at noon uh, on the webinars on multi-purpose reservoir simulators. So if you guys are interested, I think uh, it, it's their group's work. Uh, so if you're interested, uh, you can, uh, I think Tracy Lar was sending that uh, email yesterday. So if you're interested, you can uh, join the, the noon webinar. And thank you everyone for joining the seminar today. We'll see you next week and we will send an update agenda uh, to you soon for for the bureau seminar series thank you so much okay thank you see you thank next you week right. bye yeah. bye